Hi, this is Frankie, and in this video we're going to be creating a material design button with the ripple effect. Currently we just have a basic button here that when you click it, it increments a counter, and that's it. So we're going to need to dive into the code and actually create our ripple effect. So the first thing we need to do is look at our state. So instead of just having whether a ripple is showing or not, we're going to have an array of ripples. And then we're going to map over that array in render to create a list of ripple elements. This is our ripple class here. It's mostly empty at the moment. We have uh, two pieces of state, one for if it's animating in, one for it's if it's animating out. And then once it's done animating, we want to call the onRequestRemove function to clean up the extra element from the DOM. So first, let's start by mapping over our ripples. So this dot state dot ripples dot map but what do our ripples look like well in order to define that we'll need to actually add our ripples so we're going to create a function here for on click first we're just going to call the parent function on click so that our counter continues working then we need to take our event object and get the left position so that's going to be the elements or the events dot page x minus e dot current target dot offset left. And we'll do the same thing here for right or top rather. Now we'll need an ID. Now what this ID will let us do is be sure that we're removing the right elements even if multiple removes fire at the same time. So we're just going to set that to math random to string. Then we're going to need to push that onto our ripples away, array. and we'll create an object with properties left, top, and ID. And then we'll store that in state. So now in our map down here, we can take our left, top, and ID and return a ripple element. So we're going to have our ripple. It's going to have a left of left but we need this in pixels. These are styles, so we need to add the, uh, the unit. Top is top, key is ID. And then on request remove, we'll fill this in in a little bit. But for now, we'll just use an empty function. It's not very important. Okay, so now in our ripple, let's see if first we have, if we click, we get a ripple and it shows up. And if we click again, we get more and it, you can see that this is getting darker. In our ripple component, we're currently just returning ripple as text, which is why you see it up here. So what we need to do now is get rid of this text. We're not gonna have any children in our ripple element. And then we need to deal with these animation states. So when the component mounts, what we want to do is set a timeout for just long enough that the browser will update and register the change. And this is because in our ripple.css file, we're using CSS transitions. So we're transitioning on our transform property and our background property. So this will change the opacity, basically, of the ripple. And we're using a uh, top and left that default at 50% if they're not provided in our, if they're not provided as left and top here, just to give a nice default behavior. Then we're translating them to the left and up so that it'll be exactly centered as you can see here, no matter what the uh, dimensions of the element are. And then we're scaling it. So we start it small and then it gets bigger, and then it gets even bigger, and then it disappears. 
and also the opacity fades out to zero before it disappears. We have our duration of 230 milliseconds, and that's our duration in the transitions here. So what we're going to do is we first set a timeout. Now this ensures that uh, the initial class of ripple with this transform and background get applied before we transition to a new state, which is ripple dash in, and that'll be our in animation. So we're going to set state in is true, out is false. Okay. Now down here we have to update our class name. If this dot state dot in class name is equal to class name plus ripple dash in. Now if we refresh over here, when we click, it gets bigger does a basic animation. Now we need to do the same thing, but make it go out. So we're going to copy that. We're going to do a set timeout of duration, so 230 milliseconds, which happens to be my favorite time for animations. I think it looks really nice. And then we're going to set state and we're going to say in is false, but out is true. Then we're going to need to do one more of these. And in this one, we're going to call this dot props dot on request remove. So that is after our out animation has completed, then we request it's removed from the DOM, and at this point, it's completely transparent. One other thing worth worth noting is that we've disabled pointer events on this element. That means that you're, if you have things inside the div, it's going to click right through, and it's going to. Um, it's, it's going to hit the button and not the overlay. So now we have our animations and it's going in and out. And one more thing we're going to need to do is actually implement our on request remove. So this is a little bit weird, but basically what we want to do here is remove it from the DOM uh, and be sure that we're removing the right one. So if we were to use the index of this, and two on request removes fired at the same time for whatever reason, we could end up removing the wrong one. Also, if we do the filter directly inside here and we're removing two, then we might only remove one. So what we need to do is the special variant on set state, where you pass a callback as the first argument and you return a new state. So we're gonna say ripples is equal to state dot ripples dot filter x x dot id is not equal to id so we're going to move any elements with with the id of our id variable here so what this does is when it calls your callback it gives you the state that's up to date no matter how many set states are firing at the same time so if we call set state twice it's going to first call it with the current state, then it's going to run this, then it's going to call the next one with this state that we're generating here. So it's a sort of atomic update for state changes. So now if we come back here, we have it animating, but it's still animating at the center of our button. So we're going to need to change that. Also, we're not applying the out state. That's why it's animating. I was wondering why it was animating back towards the middle instead of expanding more. It's because we need to set if state.out ripple out. This should be much better. So now it expands and then it just goes out to nothingness. Uh, so what we need to do is add our left and top. So style is equal to this. And if style or if this dot props dot left then style.left equals this.props.left. And we'll do this for top, top, top. Then we pass our styles here. So 
So if this all goes well, you can see we can click and animate from anywhere. And I'm just going to change our in color to uh, something else just to make it a little more visible. So we have our blue thing when it's in the end state. And I'll just change that back. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, there will be a link to the code in the description. There will also be a Medium post where you can view the code in the video and link to it. So thank you. Bye.